Hey, what is going on everybody? Scary Spikes back here with you again. This time focusing on Blue in the series of Learn to Magic. A series aimed to teach new Magic players how to get into the game and how to master the basics. Blue is one of my favorite colors. It's very near and dear to my heart and it is very control based. However, you can also go the aggro route with this and this is what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to be playing a deck that is strictly mono blue and that has uh, quite a good amount of creatures, about 22 creatures, 16 spells and 22 lands. The reason why we're not running 24 lands is because we have a mono blue deck. So it's a mono color. Uh, we don't have to worry too much about mana fixing and things of that sort. So let's go over the cards really quickly and then we'll jump into a game. So the first thing we have here is the Cloudfin Raptor. It's a 0-1 for 1, which doesn't seem that fantastic, but he does have Flying, and he does have Evolve, which means whenever another creature comes into play under your control that has either one more power or one more toughness than it has, it gets to Evolve, which means it gets a plus one, plus one counter. And that happens an infinite amount of times as long as you can put a larger creature into play, which makes him a very, very good evasive beater. Then we've got Tr uh, Triton's Shore Stalker. It's a 1-1 for 1 again, not that fantastic, but he can't be blocked. So this is a guaranteed one damage that you're getting through each and every single turn that they can't do anything about unless they've got spot removal. Uh, Artful Dodge, again, for one mana, sorcery speed, you can flash it back for one, which means once you've played it and it goes into the graveyard, you can pay your one blue mana for the flashback cost and play it again from your graveyard, but after that it gets exiled, which means it gets removed from the game. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. This is very, very good for creatures like this that are usually very evasive but can still be blocked by creatures with reach or flying. In this case, if we play that on him, uh, he's not going to be able to be blocked whatsoever. Uh, then we've got Quickling. Uh, it's a 2-2 two, two, for 2 mana with flash, which means you can play it at instant speed. You can play it anytime, even on your opponent's turn, during combat, uh, whenever you like. It does have flying, and uh, whenever quickly enters the battlefield, you sacrifice it unless you return another creature you control to its owner's hand. So if you've got a really big beater that your opponent is trying to kill, this is a great way to bounce it back to your hand. It's a little bit like unsummon on a stick, so that's really, really good. Uh, and we do need quite a bit of draw in this deck, so we're going to be running 4 Think Twice. This is a very good card from the Innistrad block, uh, the Innistrad set rather, and uh, it costs 2 mana, you can draw a card at instant speed, which is fantastic, and the great thing is you can flash this back for 3. So I've been playing a few games with this deck now, just trying to test it and see how it works, and there's been several occasions now where I didn't have a counter spell in hand, which I needed to counter a very serious spell that my opponent was playing. Well, I ended up using Think Twice, and I uh, had about 5 mana open, so I used 2 mana on Think Twice, and then I ended up drawing into one of my 3 mana uh, Dissolves, uh, which is basically a counter spell. So that's very, very nice. You can do that at instant speed, and you can flash it back as well. Uh, then we've got a single negate. Uh, this is more for spell heavy decks. I was thinking about putting perhaps one more in there uh, and replacing something like a Laboratory Maniac, which I think that's what I'm actually going to do. Uh, because Laboratory Maniac is a good card, but it doesn't necessarily win us the game on a regular basis, although it can, and I'll explain that in a second. So we're going to run two negates. We're going to run two nullifies as well, which is two blue, which is not a problem because we're playing a monocolor deck. Again, instant speed and it counters target creature or aura spell. This is very good if you're playing against an enchantment deck or really any other deck with just a bunch of creatures in it. So for two mana, counter your 7-7 seven, seven Palaka Worm that gains you seven life and draws you a card when it dies. Pretty good stuff. Uh, we're going to go with just a one Laboratory Maniac here. Uh, three mana for a 2-2. Two, two. Human Wizard, I run this guy in my Azami deck, by the way. Uh, Azami is spelled A-Z-A-M-I, if you guys want to go check her out. She's a legendary creature, O2, and I run her as my general in my EDH deck, which is also mono blue, uh, that I play uh, with my friends, uh, Paper Magic, of course. And basically what she does is uh, she draws you a card whenever you tap a wizard, and that deck has about 21 wizards in it. So it's it's pretty hilarious and the nice thing is this is actually one of my win conditions in that deck So what I end up doing is I have spells that will either draw me my entire deck uh, I.e. enter the infinite or I just draw like crazy because I have a bunch of wizards What's nice about this is once I finally have one card left in my library I can just tap a wizard with this guy out uh, and then tap another wizard and I win the game because the first wizard draws me a card and the second wizard draws me a card as well but because I can't draw Laboratory Maniac says if you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it you win the game instead of course instead of losing it which is usually what happens without him in play so really really cool card I really like it I'm glad that it came in now one of the DLC packs uh, for Magic 2015 very very happy with this card another good card is uh, Chasm Skulker he's a 3 mana 1-1 one, one. and uh, pretty pretty simple 
Uh, he just uh, gets bigger every time you draw a card. We've got tons of card drawing here. So, of course, he's going to be absolutely massive. And one of the last games that I played, uh, the person I was playing against actually ended up using a Plenary Cleansing while this guy was at a 10-10. Uh, so if you read his second ability here, it says, Whenever uh, Chasm Skulker dies, you put X 1-1 Blue Squid Creature Tokens with Island Walk onto the battlefield where X is the number of 1-1 tokens on Chasm Skulker. So I ended up getting 9 tokens after he cleared the board, and uh, that was enough to kill him. So, very, very cool. It's a really nice card as well, especially with all the draw power in this deck. And we're running two of him. Then we've got this guy. He doesn't really do too much in terms of our aggro stance here, but uh, the guard Gomazoa for three. He's a 1-3 flyer with defending, uh, defender rather, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt uh, to him. So this is very nice. You can pretty much block anything for days. As long as it's combat damage, you can block anything as long as it doesn't have a trample as well. The trample is a big problem for him, but anything that doesn't have trample will be blocked very, very easily. And of course, any combat damage that's assigned to him is prevented because of the text in the cards, so that's really good. We run three of that. And then we run uh, three dissolves, which is basically our main counter spell just for pretty much countering anything. It's going to cost us three mana and it can just counter any target. Uh, spell and we get to dry us uh, or rather we get to scry one card so scrying you look at the top card your top X cards X is equal to whatever the number is beside the scry mechanic there and in this case it's scry once so we look at the top card of our library and we decide whether we want to keep it on the top or the bottom so after a counter spell on somebody else's turn it's really nice to be able to measure out your draws and let's say if you've got too much land and you see that there's a land on top you might want to put that land on the bottom so that you can draw a card that you can play with all the lands that you have uh, conversely, if you don't have enough land and you feel like you really need more, if you end up you know, seeing that there's a creature card or an enchantment card on top of your library, you might want to scry it to the bottom in order to get a better chance to draw land. So that's a really good mechanic on that particular card. Uh, Frost Lynx is kind of funny. Uh, he's not that great of a creature, but he's 3 mana 2-2. Two, two, and whenever he comes into play, you get to tap a creature that an opponent controls, and it doesn't untap on that controller's untap step. So if you've got a really big, beefy creature that's getting very annoying, uh, and you can't get your guys through even some of your guys like of course, you know this guy here uh, That cannot be blocked. It's not a big deal But he might have a big angel or something like that. That's much bigger than than your evasive flyer Maybe you don't have an artful dodge in hand So this is very very helpful just tap it down and uh, you've got free reign on and attacking pretty much as, as much as you like for that turn uh, then we've got the Scroll Thief, 3 mana, 1, 3. I didn't get to see him in any of my test games, uh, but whenever he does combat damage to a player, you get to draw a card. Yeah, there's only two of those in the deck, but it's a 1, 3, so he's a pretty good early game blocker. And uh, with some of the other cards in this deck, he actually does very, very well, such as Artful Dodge. Uh, not being able to, uh, not, not being blocked is a very good thing because you get to draw a card. And then moving on, we've got one Master of Waves. I used to play this guy in, I believe it was Theros Standard. Uh, when I was playing a mono blue deck with Thassa, God of the Sea, really, really cool. Basically, the reason why we have a lot of creatures in this deck is because of him. We want to build up our devotion to blue, our devotion, of course, being the number of permanents that we control uh, with the number of mana symbols uh, of that color. So our devotion to blue, let's say, for this card would be one. And any other permanents that we have, the number of blue mana symbols on them would be counted towards our devotion. And that's important because he's got protection from red, but more importantly, uh, elemental creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and when Master of Waves enters the battlefield, you put a number of one, zero blue elemental creature tokens onto the battlefield, equal to your devotion to blue. So there are one zeros, but because he gives all elemental creatures plus one, plus one, they all become two ones. This is good and bad in a way because, it, well, it's good because you get to overwhelm your opponent very, very quickly with this card, especially if you have a lot of permanents in play with a lot of blue mana symbols. The unfortunate thing is once Master of Waves dies, which is very easy to do with, let's say, spot removal, those creature tokens die as well unless you have another Master of Waves in play. In this case, it's not going to be possible because we can only play one of him in the deck. So that does kind of suck, but he, he does make a lot of tokens, uh, which is fantastic, and it's a good way to win. And speaking of making a lot of tokens, we do have one Talran Sky Summoner for 4 mana, he's a 2-2. And whenever we play an instant sorcery spell, he gets to make us a 2-2 Blue Drake token with flying. Really, really good. Lastly, we have this card. This is pretty much the center of the card. It's the most card draw that we're going to have. Persistent card draw, anyway. Bite End of Thassa for 4 mana. It's an enchantment that allows us to draw a card whenever one of our creatures connects to our opponent. The more important thing about this though is that you, if you have a bunch of different creatures in play like that 1-3 flying jellyfish that I mentioned, you can actually pay this uh, cost right here and tap this to make your opponent attack for that turn. So if you're playing against weenie uh, or tokens or anything like that and you have a bunch of blockers that can easily block one or two damage, you can definitely just tap this, 
uh, which I was doing in a lot of my test games, and basically force your opponent to attack. This is a benefit for you twofold, one of which because you get to uh, sort of use your creatures as spot removal to block and get rid of any problematic or pesky creatures that your opponent may control. But in addition, it does tap his entire board. Uh, if he's not smart enough to play anything after his combat phase, basically you've got free reign on attacking as much as you'd like, of course, with the limitation of how many blockers you'd like to leave behind. So very, very good card, and it does draw you a lot of cards as well. So this is the deck, and uh, let's move into the game, just to show you how this deck works. Alright, so here we are with our game, and uh, this is looking like a pretty decent hand. We've got three mana to start with, as well as our uh, Cloudfin Raptor, and our Triton Shore Stalker, as well as a Nullify, and a Thassa's Bident, or Bident of Thassa. So that's really, really good. Very, very much on curve. I'm going to go ahead and keep that, and it looks like our opponent may be going first. Yes, he is. He's playing black. So this could be a bit of a problem getting rid of some of our creatures with evasion, but we did just draw another Cloudfin Raptor, so I'm going to go ahead and just play that. And next turn what I'm going to do as well is, once we have our second piece of mana down here, I'm going to play the second Cloudfin Raptor, and we're going to play the Triton Shore Stalker, basically just to, just to pump both of them up. So they're going to be one twos, and uh, this is kind of unfortunate, the, the beetle there. Very, very unfortunate that uh, it's basically just killing our Cloudfin Raptor there, but fortunately we do have another one and we'll be able to pump it up so he won't be able to kill it. So we just play one more. And then we play our Shore Stalker. So now it's going to be possible for him if he plays another one of these to kill the Shore Stalker, but he will not be able to kill that unless he has some more serious spot removal. Unfortunately, we are tapped out because this is a bit more of an aggressive deck. But I do want to save the Nullify later on, and we did draw into our Laboratory Maniac. And indeed, he plays another one. Wow. This is becoming a very popular card. Because it does deal with 1-1s one quite efficiently. And I don't believe he's going to attack, otherwise he's going to lose his guy. That's fine. Oh wow, that's, that's funny, we have another one. So, I don't exactly want to play this until I can follow it up with something else. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go into combat. And we're going to attack with our 1-2. He can, of course, uh, oh, he cannot double block, rather, because he, he doesn't have flying. And none of his creatures have flying. So he's going to be taking one damage. We probably will be taking two damage on his turn. But we do have the mana open for a nullify. So if he plays something very scary, we can definitely counter that. So indeed, he is going to swing. And there's no reason for him not to swing, because he can't block me anyway. So he might as well get some damage through. So we're going to go down to 18. And we'll see if he has a second main phase play. He may, he may not. Okay, so we're actually going to counter that because I believe it draws him a card. Or it makes me discard a card, which I do not want to do. So I'd rather just counter it. And then we have another counter spell in play, which is pretty good. And we're just going to keep attacking until we get some more land. I feel like maybe I could have put a little bit more land in this deck, although most of the time it pans out very well, especially if we can get into a Dissolve, or rather, uh, well, if we can Dissolve and then Scry as well as uh, Think Twice uh, to see what we draw off of that. Uh, typically with all the draws in this deck, we do have a lot of mana available, just because we're going through our deck fairly quickly. Uh, this I don't think is a big problem, so we can let that through. It's just a 1-3 Death Touch. Uh, don't plan on blocking it whatsoever. I guess he's just trying to bait some more counter spells out of us. So we're going to save our Dissolve here for something more scary. Unfortunately, we are going to be taking quite a little bit of damage here at the beginning of the game. But hopefully we get into a Think Twice and maybe draw something. There's our fourth land. And actually, I do want to save the, the, the mana for this. But I do need to start drawing cards. So I think I'm going to play this. So that whenever he attacks and connects, we get to draw a card, which is really important. And of course, we're going to be able to do that because this does not have reach. So we'll do one damage to him, bringing him down to 17, keeping the game fairly close. And we're going to say yes, we want to draw a card. We get another Shore Stalker, which is really good. That means next turn we can safely play another Cloudfin Raptor, as well as the Shore Stalker. Unfortunately, though, he's going to make us discard some cards, so that is a bit of a problem. So I guess we'll discard this. Hmm. And I feel like discarding the Shore Stalker just because this can be bigger, and we won't, we don't want to get rid of our counter spell either. So that is unfortunate that we do get to get rid of some cards, but we do have our mechanism in play right now, 
that lets us draw cards, so not really a big deal. And uh, just taking us down to 13 here, so again, a fairly comfortable life total. Not too bad at all. The nice thing is that once we do finally get some blockers in place, we can activate this for 2 mana in order to make him attack us each turn. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And before we play this, we're going to go ahead and attack. Uh, so that we can connect and draw a card. So we'll be doing 1 damage. He's down to 16. Only a 3 life difference here, not a big deal. I'm going to go ahead and draw a card off of Biden of Thassa. And it's another counter spell. So, not too bad. We can definitely play this. It's a bit of a risk because I'm afraid that he might have another... I'm afraid that he might have another beetle, but if he does, I'm just going to use the dissolve, so not a big deal. Of course, he could just have two more in hand, in which case that would be really bad, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and pass. <coughs> and hopefully we start gaining the advantage here, because he does only have three cards in hand. And what does that do? Uh, just a battlefield, he gets to draw a card, so we're actually going to counter that. Because we don't want to give him the card advantage. And that seems really good, so we're going to go ahead and keep that on top. That was our Chasm Skulker, the thing that gets uh, plus one, plus one counter each turn as, as long as we, well, whenever we draw, not really each turn. Uh, we do have the option to block here, but we're not going to block with a zero one. So we're going to take another three and go down to ten. And the Chasm Skulker is going to be very, very good because we can play him prior to combat, and we can have him continuously get bigger and bigger and eventually just start blocking these guys off. So we're going to play Chasm Skulker. Unfortunately, we do not have enough... Uh, land, but that is going to pump up our other Cloudfin Raptor, so now we're going to be able to attack with both. So what we're going to do is we're going to move to combat, and we're going to attack with both. Unless he has any combat tricks, both of these are going to connect, triggering by of Thassa, allowing us to draw two cards and pumping this up by an extra two, making it a 3-3 three, three, and giving us a pretty good blocker for next turn. And so we're going to hit yes, another Bident of Thassa, that's actually really nice. And we're going to hit yes again. The unfortunate thing is now that we have to pretty much win through aggro because we only have one of these in our deck and we can't mill ourselves anymore in order to win the game. So I'm going to play an extra land so we have the mana available for our counter spell. And then I'm just going to pass turn. We are at 10 health, but he is at 14 himself. And we do have a counter spell active as well for anything that he may play that might be kind of scary. That 1-1 one, one death touch is fine. I'm not very concerned with that. And he's going to skip his combat phase because we have something that can block it. Alright, so we're going to draw a card and he's going to get bigger. And then we are going to play another Bite of Thassa, I think. No, why don't we just play this? Then that way we still have enough for a counter spell. And we have another blocker, which is nice. And now we can start to stabilize, which is really good. Then we have our 4-4. Four, four. I don't want to attack with this right now because he does have two Death Touch creatures up. And as long as he blocks, uh, no matter how big this is, it's going to die. So let's just go ahead and attack. And we're going to hit him for 4 now because our Raptors got a little bit bigger. And he's only got two cards in hand, so I have to judge here. Let's draw another card. And let's draw another card. So now he's going to get quite large. Okay, so we can play another land for turn. And in this case, what do I want to do? I do think that I still want to keep the counter spell mana up. So I'm going to go ahead and pass the turn. The question is, do we make his creatures attack at this point? And I think that we do. Oh, maybe not. It's a good thing that he played that pre-combat. You see, if he played that post-combat, there's nothing I would have been able to do. And I would rather get rid of that. Yeah, he just got replaced by AI. Because he sees what's going on. I think twice is really good. I'm going to keep that on the top of our deck. And I don't believe he's going to go into attacks. Just because we do have some really big uh, guys here. So let's just continue to draw cards. And to keep moving in this game. So let's go to combat. And I think that we'll actually win with flying damage here. But that is remains to be seen, so we're just going to attack for 4 in the air. Again, we're going to draw our cards. Bident of Thassa is really good for that. And the nice thing is, every time we draw a card, this guy gets bigger. And once this guy dies, we just get tons of tokens. So I'm not too, too worried about him dying, honestly, at this point, where we'd be getting 8 tokens. I'm going to play a land for turn, so we're at 8 land. And... Oh, this is interesting. Okay. Well, 
why don't we just pass the turn? There's no reason to play any of these cards right now. We're in a pretty good position, and we just want to see what he's going to do. Of course, he's going to save for blockers. And what is this? A grave digger. Hmm. Okay, so in response, let's go ahead and draw a card. Well, it's not quite what I liked, so we're going to pause the timer again. And we're going to flash back our Think Twice. Okay, so we didn't have a counter spell, which kind of sucks. But now he gets to get his 5-3 flyer back. But he's not going to have enough mana to play it, so he's just going to play the Farika's Chosen and pass the turn. So I think at this point what I want to do is just win the game. So we're going to go ahead and Artful Dodge our 12-12. And then let's just go ahead and win the game. I'm going to swing with our 12-12, which is unblockable. And then we're going to swing with our two flyers as well, just for good measure. He stepped out, he's not going to be able to do much, and he won't be able to block any of them because all of his creatures are ground-based. So we just pass into the damage phase of combat, and we win the game. Alrighty guys, that is going to do it for this iteration of Learn to Magic. Thank you so much for joining me. Of course, please join me here next week as we take a look at a black deck and the strategies surrounding that. And make sure not to miss Wednesday's Heroes of the Storm coverage as well as Friday Night Magic on Friday night of all nights. And uh, make sure to check out the blog as well over at sspgaming.blogspot.com for all the information that you need to know what's going on with me and the channel and all those good things. And hey, if you like what you see, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, share it with your friends. And if you really, really like what you see, you can even head over to the blog on the right hand side and hit that donate button, buy me a beer. I'd really appreciate that. Thank you very, very much for joining me. We'll see you in Wednesday's video and of course next week as well. And uh, have a great day, guys. See you in the next video. Take care. Bye for now.